Hi and welcome to Fail Lab Lectures. Uh, this is the final part of the rotational motion. So in this part we shall discuss about how body rolls down at a steep angle and uh, what happens while rolling and stuff like that. Okay, complicated stuff. So anyway, this is say uh, the rolling, uh, I mean like uh, an inclined plane or the theta. So here the body is rolling down. Okay. okay, before we go here, I need to tell you something about this. Here, this is the center of mass. So there are two forces acting here at this point of time, here and here. So this is the point of contact with the ground, this is the point of contact P, this is the point of contact P2, and this is P1. So this is the rotational motion, okay, the same rotational motion. And this, let's say, since it's rotating in this direction, this is the rolling motion. So when the body rolls as well as rotates, there are two things that are happening. The body is slipping and bouncing. So when the body bounces and, this and slips, it's quite complicated. I, now, as usual, this is quite complicated, you know, when compared. So this is uh, moving at VCOM. So this will be moving at two times VCOM. So we know the calculations, we have done the calculations, I've written. But however, so this is the rolling motion and this is the rotating motion. So, or, um, so this is the rotation of the pure translation motion. Um, so we can call it. So we can study the motion by treating it as a combination of the translation motion of the center of mass and the ro rotational motion of the uh, you know, rest of the body around the center. So with the center, you know, you, you consider the rest of the body rotating and we can uh, you know, calculate and find out uh, various results as we shall see. So here, okay, you know, this is the center. So actually for this uh, rolling motion or translation now motion, uh, what you can find out, the velocity VCOM is nothing but the horizontal or the linear velocity itself. See, it's actually the same direction, unless the body slips, I mean, if it slips, okay, if it bounces, what if the body bounces? So it moves up and down, the axis moves up and down, then it may not be possible. But if it slides, fine. But again, if it slides, what about the rotational motion? Both are combined in this chapter and that's why it makes it hard but not difficult, guys. So it makes it hard for us to understand both at the same time. So what we need, if you calculate the, again, the V, let's say the top, here V top is equal to omega times 2R V to R omega. Here V C O M is equal to R omega from the previous and the previous lecture we have deduced it from the uh, introduction to uh, I mean uh, the relationship between the angular and the linear velocities so here angular velocity is omega V is the linear velocity so anyway so here again that means it is two V C O M so we got this this is how so uh, it's very important to know and uh, so it, when the cycle uh, tire or the car tire cycle tire is the best because you can see the spokes move the center of the cycle tire moves at half the speed when compared to the edges of the cycle tire isn't it so the tires move at uh, at twice the speed compared to the center of the wheel. So this is how it is. So it's pretty simple for one to do the calculations. 
keep it in the back of mind and uh, you know next time when you see a, a cycle or a vehicle pass by you just make sure that you keep an eye at the center as well as at the edges so in order to find out something or this now kinetic energy of rolling k of uh, rolling so what is kinetic energy of uh, rolling so first of all we have this we have described k as uh, i omega square half into i omega square so where i is the rotational inertia of the wheel right so let us uh, you know include parallel axis theorem again i'm not, not deriving it just i'm mentioning it so that you can do uh, the required um, steps so you, you put the parallel axis theorem then you get half i c o m omega square plus half m c sorry v c o m square so uh, so this is the v is the v center of mass the center so um, so the first half this indicates the ke associated with the uh, the center of mass the other half of the equation first half of the equation indicates the kinetic energy associated with the, the center of mass the second equation indicates the ke of uh, translation motion of a uh, center of mass so the total kinetic energy is equal to the, the kinetic energy associated with the center of mass plus the kinetic energy associated with the translational translational motion of the center of mass so um Okay, now uh, since we found out this, what will be the acceleration of a body rolling down uh, a a elevated uh, you know, street or or a patch of ground or something? So what is this is theta? Some body there, F N. So this is F G. This is theta. I'm not going to do the rest of it. However, I'm going to mention the equation here. A C O M is given by um, G sine theta by one plus I C O M by G R. So this is the acceleration of this ball or anything that is sliding down and inclined at inclined plane at, a, at an angle theta. So g sine theta by one plus i c o m by m r square gives you the acceleration of the center of mass or uh, the, the center of the translational motion uh, in order to uh, yes center of the of this at this point the center of the circle or the wheel the acceleration of that particular motion so again it's a linear one so it's fairly easy for one to calculate next uh, we we'll, again as i said we'll be talking about torque in the last uh, lecture we didn't uh, uh, describe torque properly because as i said of uh, you know torque uh, can be of any shape yes of course torque can be applied to a point also so now torque does have some direction so let me rub this off face for some dark values
Okay, so uh, we shall come back to the diagram later. Now, um, say this is a point here, uh, point U. So if you are applying a force in this direction, and the center is somewhere here, so the body tends to rotate in the force, in the direction of the force applied. So torque is T, sorry, tau is equal to R cross F, F R sine theta. I do apologize always in the previous lecture. I don't know, um, maybe because of certain circumstances that uh, we had, and you know, in the problem we uh, I uh, corrected as F R cos theta. We had written as F R cos theta, but here uh, it's a it's a cross product that we're taking here. F R sine theta is the correct uh, word. So torque is a vector. So the vector, I mean, torque can be given direction, it can be directed. No. All right, so it's a very important um, uh, formula again. So here, um, this R is called as the moment R. Uh, again, we, we, had just, we had already discussed this in the previous lecture, haven't we? So uh, now, angular momentum L is given by R times P. So this is the angular momentum. Okay. So it can be written as R M V cos theta. So L is equal to R cross P again. This is the angular momentum. So angular momentum here. Uh, is the cross product of this as well as this. So this is what you get. Uh, it's a, since it's a cross product, this vector is perpendicular to the vector, I mean, to the plane containing all this. So this is one plane, and this vector uh, L is the angular momentum. It's perpendicular to the plane containing those vectors. So it acts in that direction. Now, um, we shall discuss Newton's second law in angular form. I hope you remember this. Angular uh, momentum L is equal to R cross P. So R is the radius and uh, P is the momentum, linear momentum. So linear momentum times the the moment arm, R can also be called as a moment arm, uh, gives you the angular momentum. So neural loss, F can be written as dp by dt. And we have been discussing about this all throughout uh, the lectures. So now, okay, just like the previous, dl by dt. So neural loss can be written as the net rate of change of, sorry, the net torque is equal to di by dt. Again, this is for one particle system. Again, one particle as far as system. Okay? So, tau net is equal to dl by dt. That means, the rate of, the time rate change of angular momentum is nothing but uh, F net is equal to dt, but it is all one and its sign. Okay, this is how you redefine Newton's laws of motion again and again and again. And it works. Believe me, it works. So, angular momentum of system of particles, angular momentum again, it uh, capital L can be written as L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus L4. It it satisfies uh, the law of uh, superposition of uh, of of forces, and so you know this is the way you can represent the angular momentum of the system of force, or you know system of particles in one sense. Sorry.
angular momentum about a fixed point for a rigid body can be given as L is equal to I omega. Okay. For a rigid body, angular momentum is I times omega about a fixed point. Then uh, this is the formula. And I'm not going to discuss much in detail because you already know where to apply those things. So, I'm sure. so before I go to the conservation of momentum and end, I will like to tell you about something I love. But of course, I haven't got the chance to do a gyroscope till now. A gyroscope is an instrument uh, that is fixed to a wheel of a shaft which is free to spin about the axis of the shaft. So, uh, it's called as a gyro and uh, you know gyroscope is what it is generally called as. So, we'll come back to this but we shall go through the angular momentum first. Okay. So, the conservation of angular momentum if the total torque is zero then the angular momentum AI Initial angular momentum is equal to final angular momentum. So, if, if I mean, it doesn't matter what any other change may occur to the system, but if the, the net torque on the system must be zero or constant, then AI is equal to F. The angular momentum, initial angular momentum is equal to final angular momentum. Or if and only if the net torque on the system is zero and uh, you know, it doesn't matter whatever does it, whatever may happen to the system. Of course, you know, you cannot destroy the system and claim that the angular momentum is uh, still conserved or not. So, of course, it won't be. So, hence, uh, speaking in a very sensitive manner, uh, angular momentum is conserved if the torque, the total torque acting on it is zero. So again, there is one more statement that would be very important. So if the component of the net external torque on a system along certain axis is zero, then the component of angular momentum of the system along that axis cannot change no matter whatever change may occur to the system. Okay, so this is what is very important. Again, now let's come back to the gyroscope and end. Hopefully, the pro, uh, you know the precision of the gyroscope. That is what I'm interested in. So, so with this defined gyro before, it's a it's a it's a instrument which has a fixed wheel that is uh, fixed to a shaft, and it is free to rotate about the axis of the shaft. Okay, and uh, if I end of the shaft. Um, of a non-spinning gyro is placed on the support and the gyro is released, the gyro falls rotatingly downward about the tip of support. Since it involves rotation, the torque with which the gyro comes down is given by dl by dt from the formula. Okay. So this is what uh, the torque that the gyro uses to come down okay, that we know. So now, since it's uh, it's falling under gravity, it's mgr, okay? So it's mgr is what is it. So the precision, assume it is released with the shaft angled slightly upward. The first, it first rotates slightly downward, but while it is still spinning about its shaft, it begins to rotate horizontally about the vertical axis through the support at a rate which is uh, given by omega, the capital omega, mgr by i omega, small omega, again don't con get confused. Uh, this is the precision rate of, again I'm not going to derive it. Uh, precision rate of the gyro. Now, if you want to ever build one, uh, I mean, after you build it, you just can calculate, uh, you know, the values of m and g and i as well as the omega. So, you can calculate it. So, this uh, gyro scope 
is a very important piece of tool in airplanes and uh, and spacecraft of course in the international space system space, space station the ISS why because in space you don't know whether you are upside down or the otherwise I mean literally uh, standing in the in the reverse direction so you never know about your position I know that I am upside I am not upside down I am standing straight and uh, but there because of the fluid in my ears that is telling me and, and so on you know uh, but in the space since there is no gravity you never know on which side you are actually uh, standing and uh, and, wha and what exactly happens in the airplanes is that you know it's very easy for one to get distracted uh, and disoriented with uh, the atmosphere and the ocean because both are blue at certain point of time in the day and at night even at night sometimes it does happen so the pilots get disor disoriented but the plane with I mean the modern jets and every plane does have the gyroscope what the gyroscope does is it you know it tells you the precise I mean it tells the instruments present on the airplane about the precise position of the aircraft so if the aircraft is upside down it, it uh, you know it beeps a warning signal uh, telling that hey mr. pilot wake up wake up wake up you're on the you know in the wrong side so these uh, this gyro was a very important discovery without gyro I don't know you couldn't do the experiments in space and we know so much about the thermodynamics and stuff in the zero gravity and without this gyroscope uh, it would have been almost impossible to do all such and the airplane as I said it would be mm, well very dangerous to fly uh, from here to anywhere and airplane would be much 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 dangerous and uh, people would never opt to go you know never opt to fly it. Uh, you know, fly again in their lives or maybe like that uh, you know as it is as serious as that so this gyroscopes have played a very important role in the history of humans and uh, and of course our technology is much more better with gyro than without it thank you very much for watching and uh, goodbye from me from now for now